Is that the gin or the tonic? Yeah. Thank you very much. One minute for its Canadian position. position. They don't have anywhere to go. It's it's a weird place to be. It's normally such a happy show spot. And right now, it's my third time. Okay. It's been a while since I've done it. Yeah. 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 Last year was interesting because it was Dragon Flies. Dragon Flies, like, maybe five years ago. Yeah. Yeah. It's like the wings at the top. He's trying to speak and chew on the dragon fruit. I did scorpions. Hello, everyone. Welcome. Hi, folks. Welcome to the North Carolina Museum of Natural Sciences. Welcome to the 2018 Bugfest Critter Cook-Off. Yes, give it a round of applause. Thanks for coming out to the museum every day. Uh, thanks for being here to watch our two amazing chefs battle it out to prepare their best bug-filled dishes for our Critter Cook-Off. Today on my right, we have Chef Alex Cordova from Tonbo Ramen from downtown Raleigh. Give him a round of applause. And then over here on my left, we have Chef Drew Smith from Buku Wake Forest in Soka, Cochina Latina. Welcome him. These two chefs are going to be competing to prepare food, an appetizer, a main course, and a dessert with bugs. Today our chefs are going to be cooking with mealworms, superworms, and crickets. And then our judges will be tasting throughout the program, and by the end of the show we will crown someone the 2018 Bugfest Critter Cook-Off champion with this gorgeous trophy. So, <laughs> chefs, are you ready to begin? <coughs> Let the battle begin! <laughs> so our chefs... Now, I said that. They've been warming stuff up already because our chefs have 50 minutes, five zero minutes, to prepare their best bug dishes using, again, mealworms, superworms, and crickets. And things are already sizzling here inside the Museum of Natural Sciences. Now, uh, out here in the audience, who's actually tasted food with bugs? Anybody? Anybody? Couple of folks. I see some folks who might have to. Who wants to try bug-filled dishes? Yeah, fantastic. Our judge, two of our four judges want to try bug-filled dishes. Oh, okay, there they go. There they go. Two of our, and now we have all four judges are ready to try the dishes. But say what? Let's meet our judges because we've got quite the lineup this year for Bugfest. Uh, closest to me is Steve Daniels. Hi, Chris. Hi, Steve. Steve is the co-anchor for ABC 11 Eyewitness News at 5, 6, and 11, Monday through Friday. So everybody go catch him tonight, unless you're watching WRAL, <laughs> and we'll get to Deborah in just a minute. Back and forth. He also anchors the Eyewitness News at 10 on weeknights at CW22, and he's been honored with seven Emmys. Is that right? That's right. Seven Emmys and several other national awards for outstanding investigative reporting. Thanks, Chris. It's yeah. great to be here. I've been doing this, uh, I, I think, for how long have you guys been doing this? The Critical Golf has been more than 10 years, I think. Yeah. A long I think, time. I think, I, I base it on uh, when I used to bring my kids when they were little, really little. And so... Uh, my guess is, uh, I think you guys have been doing this close to about 15 years, and I think I've been here just about every year. So it's always fun to come back and see what uh, the different chefs and the different ingredients aside. Fortunately, they bring stuff other than just the crickets and the worms. Yeah, there's some really good smelling food yeah. already yeah. happening here at the cook-off. Yeah. Now, next up on the judges panel, we have Dr. Stephanie Ware. Hi, Stephanie. Hi. She's a marine ecologist, conservation strategy advisor, and a global spokesperson for the Nature Conservancy. And I, she told me before the show that she has a pantry full of insects for cooking. Yes. So we have an avid, avid critter cooker on our judge panel. Uh, throughout her career, Dr. Ware is focused on researching and developing new strategies to reduce threats to coral reefs and ocean ecosystems, paying special attention to how the fates of reefs and people are intertwined. So we're really excited to have your scientific expertise on the panel this year. Thank you. I wouldn't say I have a pantry full <laughs> or that I'm a veteran. It's all brand new packaging that I'm experimenting with right now. Experimenting with, yeah. okay. That's great. 
But thanks for joining us. Thank you. Now, next up on the panel, you might notice another familiar face. It's Nigel Arms. Now, Nigel is with BASF. He's Director of Research and Development. He's got more than 25 years' experience leading agriculture-focused, globally located organizations and projects in diverse fields, new product discovery, research and development, technical service, technology, and field biology for the agrochemical industry, government, and NGOs. And he's helped judge several Bugfest competitions as well. Yeah, that's right, Chris. This is my, my third go at uh, the eating bugs. So interesting to see what we have this year. The, the dragonflies last year were kind of a challenge. So. <laughs> the dragonflies. Was yeah. it tough to get just to get the wings down? It was the wings. Yeah. It was the wings. Yeah. I remember seeing the gorgeous fried dragonflies on top of like a fritter and ice cream. It looked delicious. I didn't get to try it, unfortunately. It was a lot. Trying to get those wings down. That was, Nigel's right. Yeah. Well, we have extra water on the table for you this yeah. year. Yeah. Just, <laughs> just to be safe. But thanks for being here. And then, last and certainly not least, sitting down here at the table from WRL TV, Deborah Gardner. Deborah Morgan, I'm sorry. Oh my gosh, Deborah Morgan. Hey, you is fine. Ten time Emmy Award winner. That's more than Steve. I know. Yeah. Exactly. 2017 North Carolina Association of Broadcasters Anchor of the Year Award. Look at that, everybody. And you can find Deborah on afternoons and evenings at WRL TV. So, Deborah, have you tried critters? Absolutely. I, I'm a veteran judge as well. I just haven't been here in a few years. But I've had scorpions, worms, ants, crickets. Yeah, that's kind of old hat. Um, oh, you had the scorpions. Yeah. I remember scorpion yes, year. That yes, one was so a tough one. I, I came hungry, and I'm ready to go. <laughs> I love it. Now, they're very excited to eat bugs. How many of you would actually eat bugs? If you went to a restaurant and bugs were on the menu, would you pick them up? Awesome. It's, it's everyone who's like under 10. I'm guessing under 10 years old. They're like, yeah, I, I was riding my bike yesterday and ate three bugs. So <laughs> accidentally, <laughs> accidentally yeah. just happened to ingest a few. <laughs> I was bike riding the other day and must have had about 25 to 50 <laughs> gnats that I swallowed. So oh, you're yeah. warmed up. You're ready. I am warmed up. Yeah. Got the protein going. How do you? How do you not? <laughs> <laughs> in fact, and bugs are eaten all over the world. Right. So that we here in the U.S. have kind of this gross factor that goes along with it seems strange when you look around the world at how many people are are actually preparing and eating bugs, and a lot of them are actually really delicious. Mm -hmm. I mean, not always just like absolute gourmet like we're having here at the Critter Cook-Off, but just street food mm -hmm. even. So that's really cool. Yeah. yeah. As long as they're not like alive and crawling on the floor yeah. in the restaurant where you're eating, then I'm good with that. As long as they're not crawling. Yes. <laughs> yeah, that is a good thing. And these guys know how to camouflage it well. I mean, they, right. they, are, uh, they are amazing in the kitchen and uh, whatever they happen to be cooking and uh, throw a couple bugs in and... Ideally, we might not even know we're eating bugs. That's the whole. That's the whole goal. Remember, we had sushi one year. Yeah. The sushi and it was shaped in like a worm right. shape, and they were in the middle and crickets, I think, yeah. in the middle mm. of the sushi. You never knew that they were mm. there. Yeah. yeah. Just Very. a little extra crunch. Yes. In there. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I missed. I missed sushi year. That was good. That sounds that like a fun good. year. Is that the trick? Just hiding the bugs. Yeah. It makes it a lot easier. I, I, yeah. Yeah. I think that's uh, that, that's the artistry <laughs> in what these chefs are doing. Yeah. So it's not raw. We're not, we're not, yeah. we're not, no, no raw bugs. No raw, gooey, gutty, so, gross. Talk, talk, everybody talk closer into your microphones okay. Okay. for yeah. me, please. That way, eat the microphones. Eat. It's not like the fancy TV stations where the sound just carries from everywhere. So, uh, so speaking of the chefs, let's actually meet the folks who are cooking stuff for us. So the chef team closest to me is executive chef of Tombo Ramen. Alex Cordova, give him a round of applause. And he brought with him head chef Francisco Segovia from Tambo Ramen. Uh, so Tambo Ramen actually, oh yes, round of applause. Uh, so Tambo Ramen is just right across the street from us here at the museum over on Wilmington. Uh, no, the restaurant opened February 2018, developed by a team of local restaurateurs with over 80 years of experience in the Triangle. Uh, chef Alex here has been cooking for about 14 years, originally from Guadalajara, Mexico. And when Tambo opened, he had this to say, that the menu at Tambo features freshly prepared ramen dishes with select ingredients to complement the broth, 
that ramen is meant for sustenance and delight at the same time. So I hope that, I don't know if we're getting ramen on the menu today. No ramen on the menu today, but we're definitely gonna get some sustenance and delight and critters on, on these dishes today. Now, competing against Chef Alex and Chef Francisco down here at this side of the cooking table, from Buku Wake Forest, we have Chef Andrew Smith. And then helping Chef Andrew out, we have Chef Lane Calloway, sous chef at Buku. Uh, chef Andrew is originally from Chapel Hill, actually, and after spending time abroad in Southeast Asia enjoying street food, decided to bring those street food flavors back to Raleigh for Buku, where he's been since 2011. He's also been at Soka Cocina Latina, which is over in Cameron Village, and now he's here representing Buku's newest location in Wake Forest. So we're really excited to have both of our chef competitors here, and it looks like even some of the first dishes are coming up. Wow. All right. So judges, hope here you're ready. Wow. That looks fabulous. Wow. Mm. It does look <laughs> yummy. Let, I gotta take a picture of this. I can't see the so yeah, Instagram it and then and then oh, eat yeah, it. Yeah. Yeah. Take yeah, your take your pictures and then okay, and then get go. to snacking. I'm just gonna dig in with my um, Thank you. Mm. Right. A worm. Alright. Yummy. Mm -hmm. Boy, that's delicious. Chris, could, are you, is Alex going to describe this for us? Yeah, I'm going to okay. see. So, Alex, tell us. I'm going to bring the microphone to you. I guess. And tell us what we have for your appetizer. So the worm that I'm using is basically the super worm. The super um, worm. It's uh, shredded Crunchy. pork uh, uh, with uh, a, a spicy ginger spicy. barbecue sauce. Wow. I'm using a That's little good. bit of macro greens with sure a poison, sriracha vinaigrette, pico onions, and a uh, uh, tempura fry uh, shisho mm -hmm. leaf. Will you take with, out my uh, uh, All right, let me get some worms. So, mm. Oh, so we've got oh, crickets. crickets. Crickets and, and uh, super worms. Super worms. Crickets wow. in there uh -huh. and super worms down below. That's right. Okay. I can't so see the crickets. Are super worms like super worms? giant mealworms? What are super worms? Super worms are giant mealworms. Okay. Here we say in we're in essence. Okay. Uh, yes. it, it can be two different ways. So when the worms are grown for consumption, Sometimes they're just mealworms with a little juice added to make them bigger mm -hmm. and stronger. And then, but there's also a superworm that comes from a different beetle species. Okay. But in yeah. essence, they're both species of darkling beetle. So these are beetle larvae that we're cooking up now. It's, it's actually a steam bun, so okay. you can grab it like a taco oh, yeah. and take the, the bite. Just okay. <laughs> so, Thank sorry. you, Alex. So you, can, so you can just get your fingers in there mm -hmm. to really dig into this. The first yeah, bug appetizer. The fork. Yeah. This is delicious. And once again, uh, Chef Alex's appetizer, pulled pork with super Sorry, worms get it on the fork. with spicy garlic ginger barbecue sauce. Mm. All right. Okay. Now our judges are tasting each dish and rating each one on three different categories. Taste, originality, mm -hmm. and presentation. Right. They'll score each dish one to five, one being the, no, send it back to the kitchen, and five being a, gonna die happy having eaten this. It looks like they're crawling, but, uh, well, I don't know, I better check that out. No, that's, that's dead. It's dead. It looks like it's crawling. Talk about hiding them in there. There we go. It is yummy. All right. Now, while our judges are tasting... Their I first bites of critters. Yeah, I do want to mention go with the steam bun. that tomorrow, Saturday, October 20th, from 9 a.m. to 4 p.m. here inside the museum is our annual Bug Fest celebration. The entire museum, both yep. buildings, is going to be full of vendors, exhibitors, games, crafts, activities, and we'll have stuff happening out on Bicentennial Plaza. If you want to come back and try critters, you can do that at Cafe Insecta little, um, out on the plaza. So make sure no, you're at Bug Fest tomorrow. Good. It's the biggest bug celebration in North America. Don't think about the worms. Oh, maybe I taste them. They're actually pretty good. Taste the worm? Yeah. Crunchy. The crickets. Let's try that. Let's try a. 
You see the crickets there? Let's try, uh, let's see how the... Like, he said this is a, a leaf. Did you guys catch the, the kind of leaf this is? Wow, and, and of course, I have yeah. to mention <laughs> our fabulous sponsors. Yeah. Sponsoring Bugfest every year now. We have the Terminex Corporation, so we're super excited that Terminex shows up for Bugfest. It sounds weird. weird. Why does a company like Terminex sponsor Bugfest? But it's because they love bugs together. just as much as anybody. They know the most about critters. And so they sponsor Bugfest. We're super excited to have them. And then, of course, we have our second sponsor this year, BASF Chemistry, which Thank Nigel you. Arms is actually here representing today. So please give a round of applause for the sponsors, the folks who help the Museum of Natural Sciences yeah, put on Bugfest every year. We really do appreciate their support. With the soup. Okay, cool. Thank you. So it looks like the, uh, okay. the next appetizers have come out to the judges. Let's get the worms in there. Chef Smith, what do we have? Maybe I'll set All right, so today for you we did a uh, broccoli bacon lobster bisque. Uh, so this is broccolini that we cooked down with some cream. And then uh, the mealworms we fried in bacon fat and rendered out so they're really nice and crispy. Wow. Uh, there's little bits of uh, butter poached lobster and then some spicy pickles. And yeah, that's about it. A little bit of chili oil. Mm. The worms are cooked perfectly. Yeah. yeah. I'm gonna get over here and take a look at this. Yeah. This looks Good. amazing. You know, I missed yeah. what the leaf, the, the oh, now what I kind of leaf that, that was. Can, can we ask Alex again what kind of leaf that was with the crickets that were in it? So, Chef Alex, in your appetizer, uh, what was what had the crickets in it? What was, what was it? Yeah. What what kind of leaf was it? Shiso uh, shiso so leaf. Shiso. Shiso. Used in a Japanese okay. restaurant uh, as a nigiri or, or as a, just a decoration, but it's kind of like minty flavor a little bit. So once you add the uh, tempura and uh, crickets on it, so uh, it's a good combination. Just crunchy. So a Japanese yes. shiso leaf. Okay. Yeah. So I have a question um, of the chefs. Are these regular dishes that you have in the restaurant and you're just modifying them with worms and our secret ingredients in the crickets? Or, or is this just a whole new concoction for Bugfest? Um, this is a whole new concoction. This is a little deceiving. Um, it looks like in the restaurant, moving, we trim the broccoli. And I like to use the stem, so frequently I make broccoli soup for people. So this, it, we dressed it up. We put it in a tuxedo today. Okay, in yeah. <laughs> a tuxedo. Broccolini broccoli soup, soup in a tuxedo. In a tuxedo. Great mm. Broccoli soup in a tuxedo. Does it taste like it's in a tuxedo? Oh, it's so good. I'm getting really nods, good. yeah. Really good. And Chef Alex, are these dishes that you might normally prepare in the restaurant, or are these brand new creations? It's actually a brand new, but after today, maybe gonna uh, we're going to be open to cook some more. Uh, yeah, absolutely. You should, should definitely good. add worms to the menu in crickets at Tombo. Be the talk of the town. Yes, right. I know. This is tough. I agree. That's good. They're both really amazing. This, this may be the toughest year of judging I yet. I think so. You think so? Yeah. Really good stuff. How, how did the appetizers come out? Fantastic. Delicious. They are really good. so good. Yeah. Really good. They are so good. Yeah. I won't ask you which is your favorite yet. We'll see the scores once they come out. It's really hard uh, closer to, judge, to the end. They're, all, they're both good. Really good. They're both good. They, anyone who's watching the Critter Cook Off online, I wish we had smell o vision because the aromas in here is amazing. It's absolutely. It Audience is like, yes. I'm like, who's hungry? Who's getting hungry because of all the food? Yeah. So, Chef Andrew, I know that you spent time in, in Southeast Asia. And the story is eating street food and then brought it back to North Carolina. Well, Was that street food insects at any point? Yeah. <laughs> or is this your first time one, cooking and devouring insects? Well, no, it's, it's not our first time doing this. Uh, Lane and I actually did this a few years yeah. ago. Um, but yeah, I, I was in Vietnam for a good amount of time and um, we did eat some bugs over there. Uh, mm. There's also a lot of things that I didn't know what I was eating, and it was kind of that, that trip and living there was really an inspiration for cooking for me. It,
was just, I want to bring these flavors home, and I want to know how to make that. That was kind of my, my story. Where were you, Andrew, in Southeast Asia? Uh, I lived in Vietnam. I lived in Thailand, uh, Malaysia, Singapore. Uh, I spent a lot of time there. Why did you decide to move there? Uh, it was kind of a whim. It was a, I'm tired of college, so I'm going to go <laughs> backpack across the world. Wow. Good Fun. for you. Did you do any cooking there? I didn't. I, uh, I met some chefs, and I talked to them. Mm -hmm. um, and I, I ate a lot of street food, obviously. And uh, it was inspirational. So it's really cool. That's great. So you did really find yourself and your passion. Yeah, I did. You know, I, I didn't really have a direction until then and came back and, uh, like a lot of us, you know, the kitchen kind of saves people. So yeah. That's, mm -hmm. uh, that's where Lane we're Lane is shaking his head, too. <laughs> that's great. So what was your favorite bug food, then, when you were in Asia? I'm sorry? What was your favorite bug to eat in Asia? Uh, I, I, well, probably crickets. That was yeah. the, the one that was really... A, you could associate it with a flavor. It's it's nutty and it's right. it's, it's really interesting. And it, it tasted like food. Some of the other stuff just tasted like manure or <laughs> oh. dirt. But uh, I think if you prepare these things correctly, it's they can be really really tasty. Mm -hmm. so. yeah. Okay. You guys enjoying everything so far? I'm sorry. Enjoying everything so far? It's fantastic. Really good. Really good. Yes. Yeah. I'm trying to just limit myself because I know that the dessert is coming. <laughs> and there's crab in the in the soup as well? Is that what I'm tasting? Lobster. Oh, sorry? Lobster. Lobster. Oh my gosh, this looks incredible. And so Stephanie, you're here, so you're a global scientist for the Nature Conservancy. I'll keep talking, I'll give you time to finish your bite. Mm -hmm. And I've read recently that consuming insects, I mean, lots of people the world over are already consuming insects as a regular part of their diet, but that insects could actually save us. Like, consuming protein in the form of insects is actually better for the environment than, say, a lot of other meats that we consume. Yeah, so what I've been learning in exploring the art of entomophagy, which I've only recently learned means eating insects, is that about 80% of the world already eats insects. So a lot of people are already doing it. It's really a Western, Western Hemisphere uh, trend to not eat insects. Um, but why I'm interested in it is because uh, you ta it takes less space to grow um, insects, less water, less fossil fuels. They don't emit uh, methane gas the way our beef industry does, um, cows emitting the methane. So um, it's a much lower impact on the planet. And as we continue to grow and expect to get to at least 9 billion people, we have huge needs in terms of feeding that population. So how to do that in an efficient way is a challenge. And I think insects, they're also really good for you. That's the other fun fact. I mean, I didn't realize how nutritious they were. So, so yeah, I was looking at this and something like pound for pound, or I guess in the terms of ounce for ounce, if we're talking about tiny little critters, right? There's so much more nutritious. Uh, right, there's three, it's three times more protein pound for pound when you compare like a cricket to um, beef. Three times more, three I mean, times yeah, that's a lot of crickets, you have to eat a lot of crickets, but they're coming up with ways to do that. It's got, it's a whole animal, so it's got all the B vitamins, calcium, iron. It's yeah, when you've got a cricket, awesome. you just pop the whole thing in your mouth too, right. versus uh, other meats that we eat. Where you just so eat much the muscle, of it usually, yeah. So in this case, you get um, the uh, what is it? The fats, yeah, fats, protein, vitamins. You get everything. So it's it's kind of a superfood. I think it's the next superfood. Do they keep you full longer too, or do I you find yourself having to? I'm not. An, I haven't had that much experience to okay. answer that question. <laughs> Because they are so little, I would think you would need to either eat a well, lot or yeah. keep eating them throughout the day. Right. And what I've seen, the most likely way that we will get them is through powders. So grinding uh, them up okay. and adding them to other foods. So they become the protein addition ah. to things. So I've seen um, 
energy bites, uh, protein bars, granolas, flours, things you can add to your baked goods, mm. your smoothies. Um, so if you want a protein smoothie, it could be a cricket smoothie instead of <laughs> soy protein or whatever. So yeah, it's, yeah, it's not it's filling, but it will meet your needs. You can fill up on something else, maybe yeah. more fun. Is that, are they being ground up in other parts of the world and, and packaged like that? Oh, I don't know about, I know in the U.S. there's a lot of grinding up of crickets. And okay. I would assume that that's not a novelty. I'm not aware of what's going on elsewhere right yeah. now. I'm just looking at, why don't Americans eat bugs? That's and I wonder how question. we demystify it. How do, you, how do you demystify it for Americans and get out of that mindset that we've got to go kill these things yeah. and actually Look consume them? Look at the close-up of the... If you look at the close-up of mm -hmm. the worms, like grilling, I think people have it just a heart. You know, you just get kind of creepy crawlies. Mm -hmm. just, mm -hmm. Yeah. Don't you think? Yeah, definitely. But it really is just the perception, because you think, you know, yes. we, eat, we eat prawns, we eat lobsters. Mm -hmm. I mean, the crustacea, right. the arthropods, is not so dissimilar. It's just getting over that, I guess, like, you know, freak out factor. Yeah. That, right. Know. I mean, we've done it before. If you look at, there's a lot of comparisons to our consumption of sushi. So if you go back 30 years, people would have been, in the U.S. at least, kind of grossed out by eating raw fish. And now it's at, you know, Charlotte it's Airport. Delicacy. And yeah. it's everywhere you <laughs> right. go. So, yeah, I think it's just a hurdle that we will get over. I yeah. think because we don't have much choice. It's going to be an, it's going to, it's a very viable option. And I think people will change. So are there cricket farms where they're growing crickets just specifically? There to... are. In okay. fact, I visited a cricket farm um, outside of Toronto last um, week. It's the largest cricket farm in North America. Oh, really? And yeah, they've got about 80 million head of cricket. I oh think my God. <laughs> 80 million head of cricket. I love that. Uh, yeah. So yeah, I went through the whole process. I, I learned how they grow the babies, how they harvest, and how they wow. cook them and package them. I did the whole thing. From Do you see it as a business opportunity? Um, for me? <laughs> <laughs> I think it's a, definitely a business opportunity. It was, it's extraordinary how quickly, I mean, they have a six week lifespan, so you can produce a lot of product and yeah, I, I do, and you can do it anywhere. I mean, they were doing it out in the middle of farmland, but really? you could do it in a city. Mm -hmm. I mean, you don't need special space. To, yeah. You just need some space. I mean, their facility was like 60,000 square feet, and they have the largest farm. So, so uh, I guess uh, you, the crickets don't die in the cold temperatures then? Like if Toronto has such a large Oh, it's really that, hot in the barn. Uh, so the barn is, okay. feels it's like a barn. tropical. They keep it warm. Okay. They would, okay. I think, yeah. Okay. Yeah. No, it's a very hot, steamy place. So I was in the middle of Toronto in the fall, and... Um, I was sweating. Oh, it was, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, huh. it was hot. Wow. That's so what's your prediction? Is it going to take a decade, two decades? When, when will we be having these uh, as part of our regular dinner? My prediction is totally based on what's happened with sushi. So I would say in the next two decades, it will be just a common thing. Huh. Just, it's already, you know, I was at Dean and DeLuca in New York City, and they were selling cricket products, and people were happily buying them. <laughs> uh, there's, I went to a Michelin-starred restaurant that is the talk of the town in New York that serves, you know, it's every dish and drink is served with some kind of insect. Wow. So, and they're, yeah. Every so, dish and drink. Yeah, absolutely. Huh. I've had wonderful tequila with ants. <laughs> <laughs> Ant salt, yeah. Huh. Yeah, so no, I, I think, think in the name of research, we need to go there too. <laughs> I would highly yeah. recommend yeah. it. Yeah. It should, it should be just, uh, we should all go. We should all go. Yeah. We should all go. Take the show on the road. Yeah. yeah, take this show on the road. Yeah. We'll take the critter cook off to New York City yeah. Perfect. from North Carolina. I think we did. Are y'all all coming? Let's go. Oh, sure. coming too. Yeah. Fantastic. <laughs> so it looks like uh, we're getting some of the first main dishes plated by Chef Alex over here. Folks in the audience, can you can you see right here this layer of fried rice? We got fried That's rice, and then we've got super worms. So good. Looks oh, good. Yeah. Sorry. Oh, okay, great. Cricket. He says it's cricket, super worms, and mealworms. So this man has Thank all you. three coming out. Thank you very much. Delicious. With a delightful microgreen salad on top. Yeah. Saving space. <laughs> How nice it looks. Yeah, don't feel, don't eat too much, right? You gotta save room right, for. Right, you gotta, yeah. You gotta, you gotta <laughs> Two more dishes are coming up. Right. <laughs> I 
will say, and I, I'm sure Steve will back me up on this, it's amazing how over the years the presentation and the dishes have just stepped up every single year. It's really incredible. Yeah, these guys are, are artists in the kitchen. I mean, you guys are fantastic. Uh, beautiful food, absolutely beautiful food. And um, I, I, I don't know. I think maybe it is, maybe in my own mind, it, it's. I'm just getting used to the bugs. I think this stuff is fantastic. I think oh, yeah. everything is tasted incredible and, yeah. and and even the worms in there uh they, they didn't bother me at all no nope. no no it tastes not so good you're not even paying attention to right. it yeah. yeah what's the difference between a super worm and the other worms that we're eating obviously the, the size but um is there are they, do so they, are they harvested differently or uh the mealworms and super worms are both species of beetle larvae okay uh, the mealworm is a darkling beetle uh, which I'm pretty sure you can see them in any flower bed in North Carolina pretty much. Just the black little beetles that are running around. Right. And the superworm beetle, I am blanking on the actual species, but it's a really close relative okay. I believe, of the darkling beetle. If not, Nigel, you're an entomologist. Yeah, you, I'm Are you actually familiar I'm, with these? I'm blanking on that one too. I, I just know it's a, it's a tnebionid. It's a... It's a darkling beetle, but a different, like I say, different species. Different species, bigger yeah. bigger one, yeah. And yeah, um, but the size, when you're looking at the food, the size makes a big difference. The, yeah. the regular mealworms are really tiny. They are. Uh, you might not even notice them, mm. but then the mealworms, uh, you're going to notice those creatures. Yeah. They don't, you can't hide those in the dishes too much. And then, of course, we have the crickets. Yeah. Crickets. Now, every year for Bugfest, we have a theme arthropod. So we choose one species or one group of animals from the largest group of animals on Earth. And this year, the theme arthropod is the crayfish. Or in North Carolina, we call them crawfish, crawdads, mud puppies, mm -hmm. mud bugs. That this year at Cafe Insecta all day tomorrow, you'll be able to try dishes made with crawfish as well as mealworms, superworms, wow. and crickets. That'll be at Cafe wow. Insecta where anyone can come and try some of our fun wow. bug filled dishes. We've got something like eight or nine restaurants all local to the Triangle who are going to be cooking up and serving, including Buku. You'll be back tomorrow for Ca Cafe Insecta right out here on Bicentennial Plaza for Bug Fest, 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. on the plaza, 9 a.m. to 4 here inside the museum. Thank you very much. Chef Alex is bringing out his main course. Here you go, Chef Alex. Let me give you a mic. It's actually a, a garlic fried rice. Uh, comes with mixed vegetables, egg, and uh, actually I put three of the worms, the mealworm, superworm, and uh, crickets. Um, the salad on top is, is a hoisin salad with a little bit of the uh, fried uh, crispy potatoes and a lamb chop with the Asian sauce. Um, it caramelized a little bit, so you might find a little bit of the you know, caramel yeah. It looks amazing. Yeah. It really does. I think, like you say, every year the presentation goes oh, up a notch. It's yes. incredible, yeah. So beautiful. Oh, yeah. This is serious. Okay, business. I, got less I know, you really hit the nail on the head when you said artists. Like, the food is, it smells great. Uh -huh. It obviously tastes great. Because y'all are devouring as much of it as you can. <laughs> And it looks amazing. It does look amazing. <laughs> like you were, uh, you were all were chatting earlier. You know, how do we get Western cultures, for example, to accept bugs in our diet? Mm -hmm. And that's kind of why we do the critter cook-off because we get food that looks and tastes like this, but it's got bugs in it. Really, I'm prepared. Who wouldn't want to try one of these dishes? The rice somewhere? and the worms, they all kind of right, have the same texture. Yeah. yeah. In fact, if any of the chefs have a little extra, I am more than happy to taste test. <laughs> before it goes to the judges, if you need Delicious. just, you know, a test palette before it heads out, especially the dessert room. Mm. Oh, there's crickets in there, too. Okay. So Chef Alex just brought out garlic fried rice with mixed vegetables, mealworms, a microgreen salad, and lamb chocks with a garlic butter Asian sauce. Oh, this is good. I think yeah. I've asked this before, but um, did the worms start... Frozen, or how did they start before you prepared them today? They were already uh, uh, defrost. Yeah. But they were they crawling were around. Yeah, that's, that's what I'm picturing. But uh, yeah, they, they, they were defrost already. They were okay. And then you washed them, right? Yes. 
<laughs> little Just a little I don't want to wash away all the flavor. So, yeah. You don't want to wash away the flavor. Are these wild caught worms or farmed worms? G non GMO worms? The worms. <laughs> non -GMO worms. The, the worms and the crickets actually come to us. Uh, so, one of the sponsors for Buckfest is Armstrong's Cricket Farm. And they actually sponsor part of the critter cook off because. They actually donate the critters that we're using for the cook-off and cafe. Are inception. these local? These are, I don't know. Farm to table? Farmed <laughs> from a farm to your table. Yeah. Is it? Uh, Dirt is, to table. Is Armstrong here in North Carolina? Exactly. <laughs> you know, I'm not actually sure. Right. I saw their logo on the website right. and, re that, and rem remembered it because I, I wanted to say are, thanks to them. There are a growing number of insect farms in North picture. Carolina. Mm. There's a movement in North Carolina towards this. I've, in my limited research, I don't know. You know anything about that? I no. have seen news about a growing national trend in insect farms, especially crickets, specifically for human consumption because more and more restaurants are getting interested in putting these things on their menus. And that's, that's quite an evolution because when Bugfest started, whatever it was, 15 years ago, maybe maybe more, we, we would never have thought about that. That we were always wondering how long would it take for, for, for this to become commonplace in this country or, or uh, even uh, something, even a rarity in this country. Now yeah. it's, uh, I think, eclipsing rare form into mm -hmm. something that we're seeing, as you describe in New York, Michelin starred restaurants serving bugs. Mm -hmm. You would never have dreamed of that 15 years ago. So Steve, when you when you started off with Bugfest like 15 years ago, did you gross out the audience more than now? Because I, 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 don't, I don't see any grossed out people. No, nobody's grossed no, out. No. I think. Uh, I love it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No. When I asked everybody, like, who wants to try bugs? It's like everybody. It's like, yeah, bring it, bring it over here right now. Let's let's do it. Whereas I wonder if many years like ago, hey, can pass hey. these around? Would you like to I'll, try? I'll let you words? finish. Once this dish goes out, I'll, I'll grab them. What, uh, you want to try some worms? What's the treatment on the Is super worms okay. here? So for the super worms, we, uh, we smoked them um, in outer uh, apple wood chips, and then we pan fried them in brown butter. And beef that. Yummy. Can we go back to Alex Thanks just for a second? Yeah. I'm, 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 Alex, I'm, yeah, I feel obligated to make sure I get them. Your, uh, your fried rice and your lamb chops are amazing. Just the flavors are incredible. Yeah. What, uh, what is the sauce on the lamb chops? What are, what are the flavors we're picking up there? It's um, burnt sugar, ginger, garlic. Um, it has a basil as well, so maybe you can get some of the basil flavor in there. And I cannot tell you the rest because it's a secret. <laughs> it's a secret. It's kidding. Uh, it's, it's, it's really, really extraordinary. The, uh, the lamb chops, the, the whole thing, really well. Cilantro as well. Cilantro? Mm -hmm. Very tasty. So I have to give a shout out. Ryan Held, our Olympic gold medalist, is here, and he just tried a worm. So what would you think, Ryan? Oh, he's got the medal with him. He brought it with him. Oh, oh wow. Oh, wow. <laughs> oh, beautiful. Oh, my God. Don't get the barbecue sauce on it. It was great. Yeah. Yeah. It was great. Yeah. 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 So again, I, I feel like he's been introduced now, but now we've got a, he's here now, so. I'm sorry. Did no, I, did no, I, um, no, this is perfect. I, just, uh, I can let everybody know. Actually, this afternoon, we're going to go live on Facebook, on the museum's Facebook page, and talk about Ryan's experience. Oh, great. I mean, the Olympics is, okay, whatever. But now he works here at the museum. <laughs> oh, yeah. So we want to talk about why he likes the museum so much. Oh, wow. Swimming, I mean, he's good at that. Yeah. We're going to talk about why he likes science. <laughs> cool. So Ryan Held, everybody. He's here trying bugs. <laughs> Not enough. Uh, Ryan Held, gold medalist <laughs> at North Carolina State. Won gold swimming in Rio 2016. And now we're really thrilled. He's, he's here with the museum. That's pretty cool. Yeah. How special is it to have... Yeah. He went from Olympic gold medal to Museum of Natural Sciences, <laughs> and it was a step up. I think. <laughs> so that's cool. Thanks for coming down, Ryan. Very, very good. So I see the mains getting ready, doing a little dab of a nice green sauce. And then we'll find out what we've got going on. And then I'm going to bring some of these mealworms around. 
superworms for you folks to get a little bit of a taste. And the clock is ticking down on the Bugfest Critter Cook-Off. We're looking at about 10 to 15 minutes before our Critter Cook-Off ends, and then our judges will have to finalize their scores and figure out who today's winner is. And as we're getting ready, take a look at this right here, everybody. This plaque right here in the middle, this is our Bugfest 2018 Critter Cook-Off Champion winning plaque. This was handcrafted by a fabulous museum employee, Hugo Sanchez. So it is a handmade, handcrafted trophy that today's winning restaurant gets to display very proudly somewhere where everyone can see it in their restaurants. So beautiful. Preferably like right inside the front door, I think. Whichever wins, that's where it should go. As a mark that you won the Critter Cook-Off. You might be the best in the world. Oh, this one's for me? Oh my gosh. Or anybody that would like some. Let me, I'm gonna pass these guys around first and let folks, who's ready to try a super worm? Super worms! All right, grab you one right there. No thanks, all right. And he's like, yeah. This is a nice view. Not bad. Flowers, Not there. bad. Yeah, the flowers are beautiful. Yeah. They're crispy. These are crispy. Do you need a there you go. Do you want me to tip it up or you? There you go. Okay. Go oh, no, it's all right. Here, go ahead. Go ahead. They're no, yummy, no, I promise. All right. These were cooked by one of the top-rated chefs in the triangle. You're not going to be disappointed. Who else wants to try some worms? Coming around. Super worms. Nice and fried up. I'm excited to hear what this is. Andrew now, Lane, can you uh, can you describe for us what we have? Here, let's uh, let's give you this uh, microphone right here. All right, so uh, we really like to have fun with these uh, as far as plating and the inspiration goes. So this was kind of a worms coming out of a log. Uh, it's a flank steak that we rolled uh, and then cooked in brown butter and bacon and uh, uh, beef fat, and then it's served over a mulch that we made with Brussels sprouts. We charred them and then roasted them and dehydrated them and created this kind of like mulchy, barky looking thing. Uh, some smoked potatoes just for a little bit of starch. It's finished with a chimichurri that's supposed to be the moss. And then uh, some little enoki mushrooms and some confit oyster mushrooms, which are the mushrooms growing on the log as well. Uh, and then the superworms themselves are uh, smoked with applewood chips and then we sauteed them in brown butter. I love the the tip to nature. That's awesome. The log and really so inventive. The, the different layers of uh, what what you're putting together here, really really inventive. And I hope uh, I hope for the benefit of the live stream that uh, they were able to see a close up of this because it's really uh, it's pretty extraordinary. Yeah. Very clever. Good. Larry, can we use your camera? Let's take a look at this main right here. Can you get inside on that? <coughs> uh -huh. Oh, wow. Oh, beautiful. Wow. So those are edible? The flowers are too? Oh, okay. <laughs> Hitchhikers. Delicious. I'm going to grab my fork mm. so that I can dig into one of these. To. I brought mine. Where did I put it? It's delicious. It's good. So, judges, I'm curious, in between bites, when you got the invitation to sit for a critter cook-off, like, I imagine 
you probably get asked to do lots of things in the community and maybe a barbecue festival every now and then. But when we said, hey, we need you to try our bug-filled dishes, what's that initial response? What happens? Who goes, are you absolutely, uh, that's the coolest absolutely. thing I could possibly do. Well, especially once you do it once, I think you're just, you're in and you want to come back year after year. And I think it's getting over that initial thought of, oh my gosh, I'm going to be eating bugs. But then, it's amazing how many people are afraid to do it. Like Ed, my photographer. Come on, Ed. You, I mean... <laughs> Once you kind of get over that initial hump, I think that then um, it's it's a fun challenge to try year after year to keep coming back. Yeah, no, I think for me, I mean, having lived and worked in Asia for a long time, I actually kind of miss the bugs. So it's kind of nice to get a chance to eat them because, like I say, they're not regular items on a menu. So hmm. it's good to reconnect with the bugs. Hmm. <laughs> I had always wanted to be a judge in a cooking contest. I had not imagined it being this kind of cooking contest, but the food is amazing. So yeah, I was excited because I was just interested in how you can dress up bugs and make them really yeah. even more amazing Incredible. than maybe they already are. Yeah, I wouldn't miss it because uh, we, we, oh, we always get the best chefs in the triangle here at Bugfest. And it's always amazing to see, just get it. It's such a treat to, uh, to taste whatever they're whipping up here. And, uh, and, and, and and as I said earlier, the bugs don't bother me. After this many yeah. years, yeah. Just, it's just part of the deal. It's just another and they're better and the better year after right. year. There's exactly. no doubt about that. Guys, this is really good. Andrew and Lane, really very, very, so, very good. So that should be a challenge for the chefs here, that you need to have bugs on your menu in your restaurant. <laughs> <laughs> do you, you think gonna, you, you ever do that? You'll draw the crowds. Maybe? Okay. <laughs> So it's a, it's a supply issue then. That's interesting. What kind of mushroom is this that you guys use in this? There's two different ones. There's uh, the little white ones. Sorry. The little white ones are enoki mushrooms. Uh-huh. Uh, and then the other ones are oyster mushrooms. Oyster mushrooms. That we confit in, uh, in a mushroom oil. With really good. Thyme and garlic. Yeah. Delicious. Thank you. Mm, yeah, that one right there. I'm curious, you guys keep talking about how um, far these dishes have come oh in the time. So mm -hmm. what kind of dishes were you getting 15 years ago? Do you remember? Well, it depended on the restaurant. It's like it, a it soup, really... you know, lots of soups, mm -hmm. I think. Um, and then really nice desserts. Um, Mama Dip one year made a chocolate chess pie with ants. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, um, yeah, so just very creative, but um, not as elaborate in the yeah. presentation. And I think, it, I think it's part of the food scene in the Triangle, how the uh, food yeah. scene in the Triangle has really evolved. Um, no doubt. I mean, we have a, a, an amazing food scene here, thanks to guys like this. And, and I, I'm curious, um, Andrew, uh, if you do, because of the food scene, the way it's evolving, you, you do have to probably always be aware of stepping up your game, right? You're, you're, there's tough competition for inventive kinds of food. Well, yeah, for sure. Um, we, we try to really focus on local stuff too, and I think that's part of a trend right now. Um, but yeah, we're always, we're always reading books, watching shows, we're looking for the next big idea, uh, and that's, that's kind of the challenge. You know, we can make stuff pretty, but is it stuff that people were making pretty 10 years ago? So right. we gotta keep up with the game that's always changing. Yeah. Thank you, everybody. Desserts are going down. My favorite course, <laughs> just personally. So, so Chris, I had a question. So with the theme being crayfish, crawfish this year, why didn't we get crayfish for lunch? <laughs> why weren't there crayfish? Yeah. Well, so Bugfest was originally scheduled for Saturday, October, uh, Saturday September 14th. Or the Critter Cook-Off was going to be in the 14th. And who remembers what happened on September 15th? <laughs> Hurricane Florence. Yeah, so we had planned on having crawfish here originally, and the reschedule 
just sort of threw uh, everything up in the air, and we had to wait and see what cards landed on the table. So they, so go, getting the, they the, go bad? They didn't go bad. Oh, no, okay. it just meant reorganizing oh, okay. the whole show and making sure that we had crawfish for our chefs in time to be able to prepare their dishes using crawfish. And I don't know if you wanted crawfish in your dessert or not. Why not? Why not? Yeah, Let's right. try it. It's good for it. <laughs> but we also, we got a lot of folks going, why is a crayfish or a crawfish the theme critter for bug fest? That doesn't make any sense. It's not a bug, is it? I mean, we actually had people tell us crayfish are not bugs. Uh -huh. How dare you choose that critter for bug fest, right? You're supposed to be an educational institution. And we got to say, we are an educational institution. Guess what? <laughs> Crawfish are bugs. Huh. They actually share lots of things in common with our mealworms and the, the beetles, the crickets, right? If you spiders. squish one, yeah. spiders, scorpions, yeah. along with shrimps and lobsters. These animals are all in the same big group of animals we call the arthropods. Huh. And a lot of scientists would define an arthropod loosely as bug. We're saying bug, we mean arthropods. There you go. Mm. And they share a lot of things in common. So a crayfish, right, has a harder outside shell instead of an internal skeleton, an exoskeleton, the same as the crickets and beetles. Uh, they have jointed appendages, so their legs and feet are little segments. Mm -hmm. The word arthropod means jointed leg or jointed foot. These guys happen to have 10 of them versus the spiders which have eight and the uh, beetles which have six. Huh. So features like that put these creatures all in one big group together. Mm. And as we're learning, we can eat all of them. Right. Now, tomorrow at Cafe Insecta, nine to five out on the plaza, we will have crayfish okay. Okay. For, for the chefs preparing food out there. So what just else? come back tomorrow, we use, we're gonna use it all for them. Right what outside. else will you have tomorrow? What other dishes are gonna be served at Cafe Insecta tomorrow? Oh, uh, let's see. I heard that there was going to be an insect ice cream, and I'm trying. I'm looking at where's is Hugo here? Hugo knows. There's an insect ice cream. I've seen the cricket grits. Uh, let's see. I've seen lots a grit. Yeah, like cheese grits with crits, cricket grit. Oh yeah. Uh -huh. <laughs> These guys with the puns over uh -huh, here. Uh -huh. I like it. Did did they say it? did? Dirt and turf was your main. Dirt and turf. Dirt and turf. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. That's how you get famous as a chef, isn't it? Your 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 pun game is 100. percent Thank you. Oh wow. 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 Oh my god. Mm. Oh my. Oh. Thank you. Yes. Thank you. I'm sorry, in the cricket. Yeah. Oh. Mm. oh my goodness. I do. I will just straight. I keep missing that, sorry. I'm just oh, okay. taking the beauty. We're getting to take a picture because I wanted to take right in and see in Tenny. There's no bugs in the sauce. No, <laughs> that we know of. No, I don't think no. I know. Basically, we're going sticky rice flour. Okay. Sticky rice flour. So, um, mochi is a uh, Japanese, a popular Japanese dessert. That is uh, um, a mushy, sticky dough that is used to wrap ice cream, mm -hmm. and right. that's how you eat it. Okay. Uh, but I just come up with a mochi donut, which is. Uh, it still had the texture, the bouncy texture of the uh, real mochi, but uh, it's between a, a donut flavor and a bouncy texture. And it has a mealworm inside. Uh, the sugar, the powdered sugar is mixed with the matcha powder, which is green tea powder, and that's pretty much. That's great. <laughs> Enjoy. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. A mochi donut. Nice. I did. Oh. Looks incredible. Oh, wow. If you're just tuning in or joining us, this is the 2018 Bugfest Critter Cook-Off. We have chefs from Buku Wake Forest, 
and chefs from Tumbo, Ramen, and Raleigh going head to head. Appetizer, main dish, and dessert. Thank you. And we are now. Oh, wow. Getting near the end, wow. near the end of the Bugfest Critter Cook Off. The dessert rounds have gone out. Oh, my God. Yeah. Looks like the final, let's see, we've got the mochi donut that just went out from Chef Alex and wow. Chef Andrew and Chef Lane just delivered their dessert, their final course. What do we got? The cricket on top. Cricket. So the, uh, we did a caramelized white chocolate tart. Uh, that is topped with a cricket ganache and a cricket truffle. Um, we took the ganache and rolled it in freeze-dried raspberry powder. Uh, the sauce on the plate is a sour cherry and pomegranate, gastrique, there's some Marcona almonds, and then uh, pieces of the actual caramelized white chocolate as a garnish, and yeah, enjoy. Mm -hmm. I don't actually see the bugs in this one. You've, hit, you've disguised there, there. them nicely. <laughs> They're there. Oh, I, I'm, I have no doubt they're there. Yeah, we, they're kind of minced there, are they? Minced bugs. Chris, I think we have a serious problem here. I don't know how the other judges feel, but I think you better order up a second plaque. I, We're going to need I it. Agree. We're going to need a second plaque here I because I, I don't know. Try. I think isolating a winner here today is going to be an extraordinary challenge. I don't know how you're going to choose. I know. That's I'm just, just hosting. You have to figure it out. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, D decide amongst yourselves and hope they don't get mad at you. This is. Uh, I guess no, this, is this is. I, I, this is probably. I think this is the most competitive. Bugfest Critter Cook-Off. I would agree. So I hosted the cook-off two wow. years ago and then helped out again last year. And these dishes, we've had great chefs every bugs. year, right? Very nicely. Mm. But Very every surprised. time they just get better and better and more delicious. I think they also bring out bigger servings too. Like, you gotta really come hungry when you, you come do. to the Critter Cook-Off now. <laughs> So our judges are finishing, they're getting ready to... Wow. Let's see. Doing a number on that donut there. I feel, it's my duty to finish the dessert. Try one? Well, definitely make sure you're going to finish the desserts, yeah. Mm -hmm. But judges, I'll give you a... Let's see, we're trying... The buku dish right now. On the top and, there's a meal one and let's see, this is the key lime white chocolate tart. White chocolate tart. Oh, I didn't try that. White chocolate tart coming around. Now, Chef Andrew, did this have the critters worked into the white chocolate? It did not. So this is just white chocolate. So if you were worried about eating insects, there's... Here's your chance to just get a nice little sweet taste of something. All right, the tr the cricket chocolate ganache is amazing. That's wow. a, that's a home run. Yeah. Is that that's that right on the top? No. Okay. Here we go. Wow. Oh yeah, you you can't you can't taste any cricket. There, you can't. Yeah. It is oh. it's really hidden in there. Chef Andrew, were there bugs in the truffle <laughs> in your dessert? Yes. It's great. Poor guy. <laughs> he died in vain. <laughs> one left. But since you're going to get the only one, okay. you have to tell me everything. You have to tell me all about it. Oh, that's so good. Mm. Oh, wow. Yeah. Okay. That is excellent. She took a bite. That's definitely a dying happy now. It tastes like raspberries. <laughs> I don't taste the bugs at all. Don't taste the bugs at all. It's kind of crunchy. No, it's crunchy. In a, a buggy kind of crunchy way. Yeah. So, so you definitely know that there's bugs in it. Without, what, what would you think the bugs would taste like in a chocolate truffle? Um, I don't know. What, what's a bug flavor? Like plasticky kind of. Plasticky. <laughs> a crunchy plasticky way. Thank you very much for trying to, the last chocolate truffle. 
Oh my gosh, look at. Somebody, I'm, oh my gosh, this is too much. Sure. So judges, as you finalize your scores, go ahead and tally up. There's my secret ballot. Secret ballot number one. Secret ballot number two. Oh, do we actually have to do math? We're gonna do the math? I can do the math for you if you like. Okay. There you go. Now, as you finish your desserts. Sorry, mine was all messy. I, had, I got bugs it, all over it. I apologize. You got bugs all over, oh, all over your scorecard. No, I think that goes along with the game. That's, that's how it works out. So I'm gonna take a short break. I'm gonna tally up these scores and we'll find out who the 2018 Critic Cook-Off winner is. Andrew, tell me again about the, the truffle or lane, the truffle that's on this. Is that a, that's a, a, a the, the truffle. I, I just took a first bite of the truffle. Tell me about the truffle. Uh, so it's a pretty basic ganache that um, we, we roasted the crickets first. Okay. And then take the ganache, fold the crickets in with some vanilla, a little bit of sugar, uh, and then rolled them into the balls. And then took freeze-dried raspberries, pulsed that down, and then coated it on the outside. Wow. Cool. You put a lot of thought, all, all of you put a lot yeah, of thought into this, and it, it really amazing. shows. Thank you. I think all of these dishes should be on that New York restaurant menu. Right, mm. yeah. <laughs> they probably sell for, you know, like $30 or something a dish, right? Maybe more? These are delicious. I really feel compelled to finish the dessert. I know. <laughs> <laughs> but you're on TV, people can see. I love sweets. Hey guys, mm. coming over to try some bugs? <laughs> if you're that close, you gotta eat bugs. You're gonna try some? <laughs> All right. <laughs> it's good food too. It's great food. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. We've got crickets and worms. That's what's on the menu today. So Chris is crunching the numbers over there, and uh, we'll have the winner here in a moment. I uh, I don't know how the math worked out for you guys. I actually didn't see how uh, the, my final tallies worked, but really tough competition. Uh, yeah, <clears throat> yes. I mean, they're all excellent. I say, I, I really the, the, the layers of flavors in each uh -huh. dish was excellent. Yeah, I tallied mine up, the nerdy scientist I yeah. am. And it was very close, yeah. so, yeah. That's my guess. It is too bad we don't have two crayfish plaques, because, yeah, those are pretty awesome. These guys are all trying straight up worms now over yeah. here. I wish I'd saved more of my dessert. I could have shared. <laughs> yeah. There are worms on this, though. All right, everybody. The scores have been tallied. We are ready to award our trophy, our plaque for the 2018 Bugfest Critter Cook-Off Champion. I want both of our chef teams to know that the scores were incredibly tight. 
down to just a couple of points. Already? Without further ado, the winner of the 2018 Bugfest Critter Cook-Off, sponsored by Terminex and BASF, is Buku Wake Forest. <laughs> Chef Andrew Smith and Chef Lane Calloway. Give them a round of applause. And give a round of applause to Team Tombo Ramen, our runners up this year. Thank you so much for both of our teams. There you go. There it is. Our crawfish trophy for Bugfest. Judges, thank you so much for participating in this year's Critter Cook-Off. Thank you. Thanks for having us, Great Chris. Great pleasure. And to all of you, we hope to see you here at the Museum of Natural Sciences tomorrow for Bugfest, 9 a.m. to 4 p.m. inside the museum, 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. outside on Bicentennial Plaza. Come up and meet our judges, meet our chef. Well, they're cleaning up. But we'll see you all again soon here at the Museum of Natural Sciences. Bye, everybody.